Hello, everybody. Uh, there is no the guy from Wikisource Leaks, so it's just the three of us and it will be four of us, and so we will have actually more time. Um, I will ask you uh, who uh, works in Wikisource here, who has written something. Okay. Uh, there is a librarian in the room. Librarians. Okay. Okay. Just to just, you know. Uh, and the other one are Wikipedians, right? Okay. Perfect. So, the, this presentation uh, would gladly uh, try to explain uh, and to show you why Wikisource is a good project and uh, which are the issues that we have to solve to make it even a better project. Uh, I start from here. This is actually the Institute of uh, uh, Great Tale, like it's the, the Library of Babel uh, from Borges. Uh, I actually love this book and um, this is one of the reason I, I mm, that when I, I discovered Wikisource, like in 2006, I decided to start uh, studying digital libraries. I was studying mathematics before, as many of you in the room. And when I discovered Wikisource, uh, I said, okay, this is cool. I love uh, these things. And I started studying digital libraries. Right now, I work in a digital library. So uh, I, I thought it was kind of interesting because uh, I really love this project and I think it has a lot of potential. What are digital libraries? Actually, nobody really knows because uh, uh, there are many, many definitions and uh, mm, nobody actually agree on, okay, this is a digital library, no, it isn't. There are some requirements uh, that comes from the library field and they apply, to, they apply also to the digital world. These requirements are collection, metadata, service, and people. A library must have these things. Collection are books, metadata are metadata. Services are everything that is around the uh, around the collection and around the, the the people people are librarians and patrons like both of them and all of these things together make what we call a library collection we uh, in wikisource we try to uh, be reliable to be readable to create our material and to have quality Reliability is given by scans, like everyone can go and read directly the digitized, page, digitized pages. So unlike Gutenberg, there is always like the images. <coughs> Readability is given by the textual text, like the, the transcribed text, which uh, is a copy, you can copy and paste, you can read, you can adapt, it's HTML. Curation is given by the wiki thing, like Everything in Wikisource is editable, so everything can be curated. Like you can do lists, uh, you can uh, write policies, uh, you can just work on books and make them pretty and format them well and change font and add the images and make the text, the HTML just look like the book. Quality, because we have a quality assessment, we have a quality process for in transcription, we, we put the, the, the image, we do the OCR, we proofread the OCR, and then we validate with another round of proofreading. Metadata. Uh, if you know me, you know that I'm obsessed about this, and um, metadata in Wikisource are a very big issue. Uh, metadata are used for cataloging, indexing, retrieving, archiving, preserving information, you name it. Like metadata uh, seems uh, pretty geeky things. They actually are, but still they are very important. If you work in the library field, you, you probably know that. And uh, if we want to deal with information, we need to have a good and strong system for metadata, like to to in the, to like communicate with them, to import them, export them, work with them. Okay, metadata on Wikisource are 
mainly bibliographical metadata and like author metadata. And um, we have them in simple text, you know, it's just wiki text. They are mainly human readable. There is no metadata standard, no Dublin Core, no mods, no meds, no. And they <coughs> more they are not interoperable. We can't actually say, okay, now I take this metadata, I give to another library, or I take the metadata from a catalog and put them on Wikisource. There is no magic. There is, we can do a lot of things that digital libraries do, do with metadata. Services. Uh, I name services here everything that is beyond books, like reference, uh, like reference library is very important, like a patron comes and asks for information. He wants to read something, he wants to reach some information, and the library and the librarian has the, the task just to, 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 to accompany him to that piece of information. All the kind of categories we have on Wikisource, the lists, uh, the links, we'll talk more about the links, the context that we that we can create in a, in a Wikisource, the disambiguation pages, the redirects, this like kind of thesaurus things that we can have in Wikisource Media Wiki allows with these two things to solve some very old librarian problems. People. Librarians and users form the community. I think this is why we are different from Google Books. We are also different from, uh, for example, Project Gut Gutenberg, but is similar to us, but he's not wiki. It's very, you know, hierarchical. We are mu much more horizontal. We are not Google Books. Google Books is cool, but it's a bunch of digitized text. The OCR is there. You cannot edit it. You cannot create context. You cannot connect text with uh, to each other. And I think this is what, this is really important. We are within the Wikimedia projects. We can connect with Wikipedia. We can connect with uh, uh, Wikiquote. We can connect with Commons. Everything should be connected. I think that this view of uh, the, the, the Wikimedia project as a whole is a very powerful idea. And it's, just, it's not just Wikipedia. Wikipedia is obviously amazing, but uh, we could create much more if we could connect each other. Creations, uh, uh, books, project policies, as I, as I told you before, uh, it's possible for us as users in Wikisource to, you know, edit anything, like to develop our digital library, to, to build it together. Empowerment, because you can actually be a librarian, like a digital librarian. You can, you can come and read some books, but there is also the write mode. So there is read mode, write mode, as in every week. I think this is very important because a lot of people came and then discovered the process, as me. I actually became a real librarian, so. There is a um, fifth law of the library science. There was this guy here, this is called Ranganathan, who was actually a mathematician, too. If there is something wrong in the universe, <laughs> or something right, I don't know. Uh, the fifth law is of library science is the library is a growing organism. I think what is one of the best definition of, of a library and it really applies well to wiki and to wiki source as well. Uh, there was a scholar uh, this is, I could stay here like for, for one hour so like this cut me out. So uh, there was uh, this guy, like this Italian scholar, that changed the the the, the sentence of Ra of Raganathan and say uh, an hypertextual library is a growing organism. He, he he argued, he claimed that li the libraries in the in of the future should be you know hypertextual library. I I like to call it hyperlibrary. I don't know if some of you is uh, aware is comfortable with, with Xanadu. If somebody knows, please raise your hand. Okay, okay. Uh, and there is this quote from Marvin Minsky. Can you imagine that they used to have libraries where the books didn't talk to each other? I think th this is from pretty sums it up. Like we can actually connect the, the books in, within Wikisource. In Italian Wikisource, we have some templates we can connect text to text, we can connect author to author. If I read a book uh, about history of literature, it will quote and cite a lot of authors. We can 
put all these authors, make a wiki link out of them, connect with the author page we have on Wikisource. We can connect the single cited text they connect on Wikisource. And if there is a quote in the book, we can connect the, the quote itself within the book. So we can do actually this kind of, of link. And uh, so you can always go and read a quote within the context of the, the original book. I think this is really amazing. We can have templates, we can, uh, we actually do. Uh, we can categorize all these quotes. And in the end, I will have, for example, a category page in which Dante Alighieri is cited that will have hundreds of texts in which this guy is cited. So we'll have a tracking of the quotes. We could extract this hypertext. So the hypertext has always been in literature, like paper literature, is that it's not visible. It's not, we can actually follow it. We can actually follow the trails. We could, like in a system like that. The technology is there. We just have to do it. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> Collaboratory. Uh, this is uh, um, another uh, term that comes from um, scientific literature. Is uh, the idea is that uh, there are digital frameworks in which you can work and learn and communicate with others. And uh, in the library field, they, they they are called collaboratories. And uh, if you read. The library is your place. If you write, a laboratory is your place. All together, it can become uh, a, a collaboratory. Another simple idea is tool frameworks as a, other tools. It means that when you have enough tools, you actually have kind of a framework. You can work with procedures. We can work with different tools. And then leads to the creation of other tools, like more complex tools. So this, this path to to the complex, uh, it, it leads to a lot of innovation. And uh, if you guys are in the wiki, you just know that. Like uh, we have a lot of tools like MediaWiki, JavaScript, templates, Python, API, tool server. We can actually do anything we want. And uh, this leads to a, a huge amount of innovation, uh, of quick innovation. This is actually why some other projects that are more structured, like for the, probably the Gutenberg project, they have a lot of you know user base, but still they are kind of slow in something. They are good, I mean, but we are just different. That's, we are very quick in inventing tools, inventing stuff. We are less quick to you know standardize them, and we are like an ecosystem of JavaScript and things. Still, I think this is pretty. Uh, an advantage, a very, very cool feature of the wiki community. The future, okay. Uh, now you will actually have to shoot me if you want that I finish this because I have like 20 slides about this. Like these are all the dreams I have about wiki source. So please, you know, when time is finished, cut me out. So interoperability, as I was telling before, and TPT, uh, and sorry, I don't remember the name. Thibault, they, sorry, they, they will uh, explain what they are doing in these things. They are our men, like, so we have to uh, <laughs> preserve this idea and work with them about this. Uh, a lot of skills and competence are required, so we really need to do this together. Uh, but interoperability means, like, about metadata. By, we could grab bibliographic data from OCLC, from WordCat, from Open Library, from catalogs. Somebody out there, librarians have catalog all over the world. We have to take the, the data and put them on this source. We, had, we don't have to redo the job because it's not our job to catalog. We could disseminate metadata of the books we are doing. Like we can, we just take a book, it, it's never been digitized, we digitize it, and then we just give it to someone else easily, automatic. Metadata means like they, they, they serve to do automatic things. We want automagic everywhere. Wikisource API, uh, we still like, if we have a good system, we, we could do everything automatic. HIPAB, actually TPT work on this. And uh, uh, we can uh, generate right now uh, um, e 
key paths on the rock. We can, uh, you go to an each uh, wiki source book, you click on a link, and then it will download the, the EPUB. I think this is really, really cool because we always would have up-to-date ebooks. E there is no, uh, you know, an, an ebooks repository and it's there, but every time you, you correct a comma, the ebooks will take the correction and so the EPUBs will be always up-to-date. Sorry? Can you explain what it is? I don't know what EPUB. EPUB is um, the format, the standard format for uh, ebooks is, is, is a kind of ebook. You can, you can uh, read the ePubs on uh, e-readers, like uh, if you convert that, you can read on Kindle, you can read on iPad, you can read on all the little things, little tablets that... And this is really, really important for us. The, the, the ePub converter works. It's a little bugged still. We, we need to, to make it work to fix some things, but uh, it would be amazing for outreach. Like, we do these things because we want the people to read. So we have actually to give them the books to read. I also think that there will there, there is room to the right uh, the, the right role. Just not read, but if we could have, for example, an iPad app for a, a wiki source, you use your iPad, you read a book, oh, there is an error, and then you correct it. That would be awesome because you will distribute. You will distribute uh, uh, also this thing. Classification. I think that MediaWiki categories are kind of powerful. We could uh, do nested hierarchies. We could do tax, uh, taxonomies. We could do poly hierarchies. We could do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We could do facet classification. Like this is pretty librarian things, but uh, we could do. We could uh, take the subjects from national libraries and, uh, you know, export these things and create, you know, reproduce the, like structured taxonomies within Wikisource. We could do also with, uh, with some, with some work, we could do also thesauri and ontologies, create ontologies for, for, for topics and apply to the media wiki categories. The last, the last point is, uh, needs, Improvement needs work on, on on the categories, but still we could do that. Micro contribution. Uh, the more the more simple and small the task is, the wider audience you get. This is uh you know these are basic crowdsourcing principle. There are few books uh, that are very interesting about this: uh, the Wisdom of the Crowds and uh, Reinventing Discovery by Michael Newton. If somebody is interested, I can then write the title. Uh, these these books they they just you know go and try to study what we call citizen science. These are new projects like Galaxy Zoo, Ancient Leaves, in which the infrastructure and the interface is very very simple and very you know usable. And they ask you one thing, like for example, is this picture of a galaxy this galaxy is a spiral or elliptical? And then you have okay spiral elliptical spiral. This is very simple task, very easy, and it's like a game. And this works. This is human computation. They have a lot of users because these are kind of, you know, flash games. And they are doing a massive amount, you know, they are creating a massive amount of data. And this citizen science is, uh, is actually the future in science. They are, they are really understanding that there is a lot of people out there who want to participate in science. And computers can can recognize galaxies. Computers can't recognize, you know, OCR e like difficult difficult character either. Like OCR is still one of the edge of inter uh, artificial intelligence. There is actually Richapcha. Uh, Christian will talk about more uh, with with Richapcha uh, idea we 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 had. Cha cha cha. <laughs> and uh, so I think that in Wikisource we could you know go towards this direction and not have as a work unit the page itself, but try to arrive to, you know, the, 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 the word unit, like to work on, on, on the words. New architecture on Deja Vu is actually a big dream, but we could uh, use just Deja Vu's. We could like create Deja Vu editors. And so when, when, when it comes to the, to the scan, you just edit the, the, the picture. And you 
and you just put the, the text inside and then you always have updated deja vus with, uh, a, with proof, human proofread OCR. That would be awesome also for outreach. Deja vu is a format for uh, scans. It's uh, like a JPEG, but you can put the text inside. And that is really, that would be really uh, useful for libraries, for example, for glams and reads. You go to, uh, to a library, you say, okay, you give me 100 digitized text, I will proofread for you and give you back the, the deja vu with the OCR human proofread. That, that would be awesome also for, for this thing. I will, this is, was actually a structure uh, of a digital library uh, I, I designed for, for, my, for my thesis and uh, it's pretty complex, but this is like, is as a digital library could be. You know, you, you, you have two, two axes, they will be complexity and also collaboration. And I think that Wikisource could work very well on the text image, the trans in the, trans the transcription, and the hypertext layer. The other uh, are not for wikis, but I will, you know, this was just here to, to show which kind of complexity also Wikisource could have. Xenadu 0.2, because with transclusion, we could do not just inside Wikisource, within Wikisource, but also interwikis, like, you know, between different language wiki source, we could tr transclude text directly. We could do that in wiki quotes, transclude single quotes directly there. We could do that on Wikipedia. We could do that on the web, like blogs come in wiki source, select a, a quote and the quote is transcluded there. It's not copied, it's transcluded. So you can always come back directly within the text. Board digital document process. This uh, issue we have on Wikisource because there is no specific process for board digital documents. We are really good in digitizing and proofreading ancient, ancient books. We are not very good in working with deja vu in new PDF because if uh, I put my dissertation there, I have to retranscribe it. And you know, this is, you know, like kind of a lot of work and uh, we, we, we should find a new process, a specific process for a uh, born digital documents. Okay, I'm finished. Thank you. <laughs> yes? I don't know, like, if you have questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. One of the needs I saw was for uh, court documents in the United States. Well, on the federal court system, you need a little paper system, but you need a credit card number, and that's to set up an account. And I've seen a number of cases where you, know, you write this document, a PDF file that's in the public domain, and it's a Wikipedia article, you press a button, and then you're looking at testimony or transcript. Yes. You know, I'm not saying that that's necessarily the ultimate reliable source, mm -hmm. but in many cases it could be uh, very significant to Wikipedia articles. And I, I didn't see a place where there was a depository for these kind of documents to be used in the public domain. Is that the right mandate for Wikisource? Yeah, actually every kind of, you know, the legal world, the legal domain would be awesome for Wikisource because everything is public domain, also court cases and everything, all the laws. And if you think about it, they are really, really hypertextual. You know, in every in every sentence, like, you, you could have a lot of links to other laws and other things. It needs a lot of work. That's why it's not on Wikisource. Wikisource could uh, uh, like, you know, host all these things, like, gladly it would be awesome, but it's the community that, that lacks here. Like, some, you know, people interested in this, they should put that on Wikisource, and they could do it, like, uh, in a very, very connected way, but still, it's a lot of work. And, you know, it's just the people didn't do that, but we could do. Yeah, I think the general thing with the court documents is it should not be altered in any way. You know, you shouldn't even OCR it. Yeah, you need to look at precisely what the board had. Okay. But, um, but if you if you have the scans, you we always have the scans, so the digitized image, and if you have the scans, then you can you can have the the OCR. And if you if you think there is an error in the OCR, you just go directly to the image. So there is always the reliability of, of the, the original scan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I I've always found that 
interesting problem about grocery stores and private group work is the question of volunteer labor. Yes. Because we think about the private Wikipedia, which is which was a big task and, and motivated a lot of people to get involved, but the wiki source movement and the, the source movement in terms of the labor involved is is one of the most massive tasks for humanity, digitizing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of work, but yet there doesn't seem so far in the world to be a mechanism to encourage that labor to take place. It's almost like a failure of capital, fodder of capital. Yeah, in a, in a certain sense, and what, it is. What is, is there a way for Wikimania, Wikimedia movement to deal with this, 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 this labor problem that the world has not solved? Well, uh, I think that one of the key is what I, I was you know, trying to explain before is like the idea of micro contribution, like the idea of reducing the work unit from the page to the world and somehow. Because what I think in Wikipedia, Wikipedia is much more creative than the source. You go and you speak about Pokemon. You love Pokemon, you just do that. And you write amazing, uh, amazing articles about Bulbasaur and everything. <laughs> And so, like, you, you can do that, you know, everybody loves Bulbasaur, but still, it's, it's less interesting, it's, it's more interesting than sometimes, sometime, you know, just, you know, transcribed, you know, ancient books about, you know, legal issues in uh, Macedonia, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, uh, if, and also, this, mo this is the more creative, and I think also that in, Wik in Wikipedia, you go, you correct a comma, you save, and it's done. You know that you have accomplished something. It's really a small achievement, but it's there. In Wikisource, you sometimes, you know, have, you have like maybe a lot of work to do in one, one single page. You do something, but then if you cannot reach the other, you know, proofread stage, like you're gonna read the whole page, you don't feel this kind of achievement. You say, oh, maybe someone will, will come here and will not see that I've just done, you know, the first three lines. And yeah, just to do the, the other the other five lines, and I think this 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 uh, feeling is really you know a burden somehow. And if we could save the work of these three lines, and and and, and the user could feel that, I think that would be you know uh, a good direction. It's no, I'm not sure. It's just an idea, but I feel that you know all the other projects they are going to the small unit of work, and it works actually. Okay. Uh, yeah. How connected Wiki Source International to the whole API? Okay. Identify the language. First, you have to identify the language. There are two different. Okay, there is two different issues uh, because in Pernasal, there are a lot of Wiki Source. I don't know, like maybe one hundred. I don't. I don't remember exactly the name. You can set up a Wiki Source in every language. OCR is different, of course, because OCR, uh, they are done, uh, there are open source OCR, they don't work re really well. There are amazing, uh, you know, proprietary software OCR. I can say Pine Reader is a world known OCR. It works really well. It works well also with non Latin uh, scripts. Of course, it's, you know, they are, they are a firm, they are a company, they work on things they want. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it depends. There, there is a, they are really growing fast. So uh, there is a lot of. Uh, uh, if, if you go, if you go to a version of OCR, and then the next version, like the, the, the year, the year after, the things are really improved. So you just have to be faced with, with the software and try new software and see if it works for the language you, you the language you need. I, I, I can have a lot of conversation about this, but one point which was not mentioned at all in the talk, I think it should be mentioned, is the idea of portals. I mean, you are trying to rely yes, on a media which is categories, which is not particularly well developed, and not actually terribly well adapted. But portal space is exactly what you need to bring people into a project, because they ask, where in this project do I find the, the stuff about my particular interest? And that you do portals. And this is a way to bring people in as users, readers, and if they come in, they're like, okay, so then they will start to work. Yeah, right? definitely. So portals are undeveloped. I mean, English wiki sources began to have a systematic 
Okay, uh, thank you all for coming. So um, let me first introduce ourselves. So I'm Thibault and this is uh, Thomas. We are both uh, contributors and administrators on the French cookie source. And we're going to talk on uh, more specifically uh, how we got from uh, exporting ebooks from Wikisource to a more general uh, management of uh, metadata and semantics on, on Wikisource. Um, so, yeah, first uh, I will just uh, briefly highlight a few facts about the current state of Wikisource, even though uh, Andrea already spent quite a lot of time on that. Um, yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, Wikisource is quite big. Uh, it's the fourth project of the Wikimedia Foundation in terms of uh, number of edits. Uh, overall, we have uh, about uh, 17,000 books and uh, more than 1 million book read pages, which is quite a lot. Um, so in terms of quantity of data, uh, Wikisource is not in a bad state, uh, but we have uh, two main problems, in my opinion. Uh, the first one is that books are not uh, easily accessible. Uh, so the, the content is here on Wikisource, but we don't have an easy way to export it or read it. And, um, and the second problem is that we don't have a real uh, bibliographic database. So we have some metadata, but it's not accessible and usable as a database. We are not able to make queries not on this metadata. Um, so about the first problem, the fact that the books are not uh, easily accessible, I will let uh, Thomas uh, speak about a really good uh, exporting tool that he uh, developed, which is called uh, WS Export. So what is WS Export? WS Export is an external tool when is a tool server that exports books of Wikisource pretty automatically in uh, ebooks. So we currently export only in EPUB, but we can imagine export in other file format. So I will make a short demonstration. There is um, a book with a French wiki source. You can see a box with um, here with a uh, most important metadata, title of the books, author, publisher, and here a list of the chap chapters of the books. So we can go to the link. I got the title of the page of the source. I will go to the WS export form. I will pass the title and it shows yes, EPUB file format. I will show the pre select font for the EPUB. And I click export. I wait. I wait. <laughs> Oh. It's arriving. It's arriving. It's arriving. It's 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 very heavy tool. Actually, the one. Oh, okay. Oh, and every You, uh, we have the. Um, main page with um, a <coughs> an image of the main page of the uh, scans of the books. We have a, the uh, title page with metadata from Wikisource. We have a um, list of chapters. I will click to the second chapter and I will go to it. Oh, it's so it's slow. 
with areas, the second chapter you can read it. And then <laughs> I have an about page with a, a list of all wiki source contributors that have made modification to the docs. But how does it work? I, um, as exporter, have uh, received the title of the main page. It will take each uh, HTML of the main page uh, rendered by MediaWiki. It will parse it to get metadata. And it will take the list of chapters. It will retry chapters. It will put them in a zip file. It will add it uh, IPA metadata. And then you have an IPA file. So to get metadata from books, in Wikisource, we have written an, uh, two API in order to get this metadata, one in PHP and one in JavaScript. So here is an example of how that it works. We have uh, created a set of class HTML classes in order to put them in uh, more simple templates with um, Wikisource. And in, with this, we have in, uh, the uh, render HTML node in order to get this metadata. So, by example, there is um, a book template with uh, the title of the book and the author. We, here it's the content of the wiki page. The, when uh, the template is rendered, we get this HTML and then mm -hmm. the WX export gets this HTML and render it in Dublin curl into the um, description file of EPUB. So we can get very easily uh, metadata from ebooks because we have uh, nothing to change inside of uh, Wixos pages. It's only more simple templates that have changed in order to um, implement this micro format. So we have very, very quickly pretty all Wikisource um, add, have added this micro format in their pages. So it's um, very awesome things. But I think you will ask me a question. What not use collection system that is installed in the um, uh, Wikimedia Media Wikis and the uh, uh, export pages in uh, PDF or in uh, ODT? So why? There is three problems with uh, collection extensions. First, that is uh, the collection of uh, the horn parser in order to uh, um, manage um, uh, wiki code. So it doesn't support Wikisource specific features like uh, advanced transfusion. So we have to uh, would have to uh, add a lot of features in uh, this parser. The second problem it does not support custom metadata. So we can't set the um, name of the author because in Wikipedia, by example authors are the contributors, and, but it's not the case in Wikisource. In Wikisource, um, contributor, uh, author is the real author of the book, and that's contributors. So, um, collection doesn't manage this, uh, these things. It's, it will be, uh, we will have to change a lot of things in how collection works in order to support this problem. So, it's, um, I think it's a better idea to create from scratch a, a new tool. And then the soft problem is we have to create a new page <laughs> for each book because collection uses uh, um, wiki code but in, in the horn wiki code so we can't use uh, existing uh, existing pages on, in wiki source to create a list of chapters of each books so we it would be a big big work to export all tool all uh, books sorry. So, but we have all, uh, also created uh, new um, uh, other tools uh, with this uh, micro format. First, wscore.fr.nf is a um, website that um, includes metadata from uh, validated books of French Wikisource and provide um, a list of books and uh, metadata on authors and let you don't download, uh, download books in the pub quickly and easily. And it provides also an OPDS um, API in order to get books, for example, from your phone. You can go to your reader ap application and go to and add a WX port OPDF catalog and uh, 
you have only to download books directly. You haven't to go on, on Wikisource, find the book, go to the book export, uh, export form, past the title of the book, and uh, export uh, the book. And another tool is Cite ce livre. Uh, also on the French Wikisource, you have um, an American demo. In each pages, you have a link in the toolbox. What is it? Oh. That is a bug. Store TX metadata from the book and uh, render uh, city uh, quotes. You can easily pass in your text in uh, Wikipedia, in Wikiquotes, in order to quote the, uh, the, the book easily. And then, um, in YouTube Road, a contributor of English Wikisource as a writer, uh, the Bookmaker Gadget. It's a gadget that uh, you, you input metadata of the book. You input a list of, uh, list of uh, chapters of the book, and then you click exp uh, run, and it makes um, a pages in order to that is uh, in order to um, be used by collection and WS exports. So you have uh, with pages you can export this book with collection in PDF and with WS export in uh, EPUB. But we have. Uh, more interesting things, and uh, Thibaut will talk to you about. All right, so um, yeah, so we have a tool to export uh, books to EPUB formats, uh, but that's still not enough um, <laughs> because uh, if if we want to truly consider Wikisource as a, a digital library, we also need a, a good internal tool to uh, manage and process uh, internal metadata. Um, so <laughs> why it is important? Uh, so it's obvious. Um, we need metadata uh, to organize and easily navigate the library uh, to allow people to make advanced queries to find books based on uh, metadata. And also, uh, something which, which is very important is uh, to be able to interact with other libraries. And for that, you really need uh, uh, to be able to quickly export, uh, for example, all your, the, the catalog of all your books in a standard, like standard uh, format to give it to other libraries. Um, so at the current uh, moment, where can you find metadata on Wikisource? Um, so the main source of metadata in Wikisource is the index pages. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Wikisource, uh, I'll show you what an index page looks like. If I manage to quit the presentation. Um, okay, it's completely frozen. Okay, so I'll try to uh, keep going while we're waiting the computer to reboot. Um, so, so as I was explaining, uh, the main source of metadata on Wikisource are index pages, which are the, um, so that's the starting page uh, in the process of uh, importing and correcting, uh, proofreading a, a book in Wikisource. Um, so in, in these pages, you, you find some metadata, like the title of the book, the author of the book, uh, but the only problem is it's not standardized at all. Uh, it's written in a 
human readable format and it's written by human beings and it's uh, completely and uh, non uniform across all the wiki sources. Uh, each wiki source uh, has its own way of uh, inserting this metadata. Um, so, Okay, we'll have just one minute. Okay, so what we started to do is um, just trying try to uh, standardize the, the metadata which appears on these uh, index pages. And for that, the process is very simple. Um, we just started to uh, create a list of all the fields that we want to okay uh, thank you very much so um, yeah so to, to try to uh, make this metadata uniform across all wiki sources uh, the process is very simple we just uh, created a, a, a list of all the fields we want to have uh, for each book and then we mapped all these properties to labels which are uh, language dependent so each wiki source will uh, have a label which explains what this specific property is in, a, in a, the language of the wiki source and, and then we also um, started to map these properties to already existing uh, bibliographic standards like the bin core and you could imagine uh, adding more of these standards later. Um, so just to give you a, a quick example of what it looks like at the moment. Um, So what it looks like at the moment, it's just a simple uh, documentation page on, on the uh, Wikisource website. So yeah, we just have a, a table of uh, here all the properties we have, uh, we want to have at least in the index pages, and then the mapping to different languages. So for now, we all on, only have three languages, uh, but we uh, want to add, of course, uh, all the languages which are uh, supported by Wikisource. And you also find the mapping to uh, Dublin Core properties. Um, so yeah, that, that was the first step to try to uh, make this metadata that you find on index pages uh, more uniform. Because if you look at what it currently looks like, here is an example of an index page. So as I said, it's the uh, starting page for when you when you start working on a book in Wikisource. And you, you see you have this list of metadata, but internally it's just a template which uh, is not standardized at all. Um, and that's why we uh, started uh, mapping uh, the, the fields to uh, uh, the Vincor properties and having a, a, a standard list of all these uh, properties. Um, so what, okay, so, that was the first step. And what we were able to do is, uh, once we had uh, this uh, standardization, uh, so Thomas created a, an API to export uh, the Wikisource uh, list of books uh, by using the OAI PMH protocol, which is the standard protocol uh, in digital libraries to uh, allow uh, people to easily harvest all the books and metadata that you have in, in your library. Uh, so we now have an API to uh, support this protocol <laughs> and it will allow us in the future to do two things. So if, if we manage to add uh, books identifiers in our uh, metadata, like, I don't know, for example, ISBN or uh, ARC identifiers, we then would be able to import uh, metadata from other libraries to Wikisource and uh, conversely, to allow, allow other libraries to link uh, Wikisource uh, books from, from
from their own library. And, and this is actually working. Uh, we have in uh, at the French Wikisource, we have uh, a partnership with uh, the National Library and uh, for, I cannot remember, I think it's 1500 books. We have links uh, from the digital, uh, from the National Library to uh, the Wikisource pages. <laughs> And, and having this API will allow us to uh, extend the partnership a lot. Um, so yeah, as a, uh, okay, I can show you maybe a quick uh, demonstration of what the, the API looks like. Um, So here, so I have this index page, and if I click on this thing, so it's it's uh, so this is the uh, Wikisource instance on the lab server. So it's uh, just a testing Wikisource; it's not uh, real data. But yeah, so if I click on this thing, I can export all the metadata of this book in this uh, standardized uh, format. So for example, you see here all the dubbing for uh, fields. And uh, like here, we have some examples of uh, possible identifiers that we could uh, have in our database, and which would uh, allow us to uh, quickly interact with other libraries. Um, so yeah, as a conclusion, I would say that um, so w the tools we have so far uh, tend to show that with minimal effort in terms of standardization and uh, coordination across all wiki sources, we could quickly have a huge gain in terms of uh, mm -hmm. interoperability uh, with other libraries and uh, accessibility, making the book uh, more easily accessible to users. And it's it's very often it's just a matter of uh, discussing uh, with other wiki sources to try to have a, a common practices across other wiki sources. And just by doing very simple things, we were already able to create uh, uh, the beginning of uh, an API to export to to use the OAI PMA protocol. And we could imagine in the future to have uh, a lot of uh, tools uh, to, to, to interact with other libraries. And um, so, so, yeah, I, I think that's the, the most important thing to understand. It's, it's not very complicated to, to attain uh, this kind of interoperability. It's just a matter of uh, standardizing uh, the practices. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's it. If you have uh, questions. I guess uh, that's probably something that was being discussed some years ago with just a library that was, wasn't involved that much in the in this group, but that why are there so many, the, I mean, Wikisource for each language? I mean, uh, I have on my bookshelf, you know, uh, books from uh, multiple languages and with, uh, you know, biography. All, all this stuff seems to be uh, really language independent. So kind of confused why it's such a big diversity there and so many different parallel efforts to build tools and uh, things like that. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh... I, I think if, so we, we indeed have examples of, for example, books in uh, uh, bilingual books, for example, which uh, which defeats the, the concept of having uh, a wiki source for each different language, because for bilingual books, you obviously need to uh, have uh, two uh, communities working together. Uh, however, I think for, for, at the beginning, it's easier for users. If, they can just uh, proofread books in their own language in an interface uh, uh, which is using their own language. Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree it makes sense to, to consider Wikisource as a universal library and, and it doesn't seem uh, a good idea to uh, separate all the languages. I just think it's easier for contributors um, because we have tools to for bilingual books, for example, we already have tools to have uh, contributors in one wiki source correct the page on the left, which is in, in their language, and have contributors from the other wiki source to correct the to proofread the right page, and then we can uh, have uh, transcode doing interwiki transcriptions, and uh, and have the both languages uh, in at, in one place. 
So we have tools to do that already. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because we have that, I think we can make it work even if we separate uh, with this possible negative. Sorry, I just want to say historically, uh, I think that the, at the beginning Ubisoft was the same, Ubisoft Dark, and then they split between several because of the Hebrew Ubisoft, because they had the right to left problem, they, yeah. they had the interface could not make sense of their books, so they just played to that, and Ubisoft became a, a different one. And how much of the tools that we use, uh, you know, so I'm familiar, I've seen some tools of English in the source, uh, I don't know, uh, authority control adding tool, very nice there. Uh, I mean, how, is that something that I will find in other ones, or is it something that... Uh, if the community have, have, have developed that, because for example, uh, yeah, we don't have the authority control in other Wikipedia, and the only tool that's massively used is the appropriate extension, when they did, they just, you know, mm -hmm. apply for everyone, but all the templates, the tools, uh, they are localized. They are just from the community. This is actually one of the issues. There is not much coordination because all the communities are very small. <coughs> and there is not much coordination about that. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Th there is. Uh, there are lots of local gadgets in each, in each wiki source which are not exported to other wiki source, and yeah, that's a problem because there is a lot of uh, lots of energy in in the, in the process. Yes. Yes. Uh, at the moment, so at, at the moment, the, the tool is just a standardized quotation, but it, it could be really easy to add uh, other formats like uh, using a, a standardized template or using all these uh, already existing formats for quotations. Yeah, so so it's, it's not very complicated. Uh, okay, one last question. Uh, no, so that's uh, one of the other issue, which is uh, strangely enough, Wikisource is a big project, but it's not uh, supported at all by the foundation, and all the development, all the work is done by uh, volunteers. Um, yes. Uh, so it was uh, actually we have the person here in the room, um, Jean Frédéric. <laughs> no, no. So it was uh, there was some interaction. So it was a user from the uh, French Wiki source which already had contacts at the National Library, if I remember correctly, and and it just uh, happened like that from local contributors. I, I think we are running out of time. Uh, we will probably have time after the last presentation to answer more questions. Thank you, everybody. Hey. Yes. I made a couple of modifications, which I don't know <laughs> is virtual, but it's not a problem. I'm Christian Consonio, uh, also known as Christian Cantoro. I mostly. I'm a user of Italian Wikipedia, and I'm also in the board of uh, Wikimedia Italia. But uh, since uh, I'm a close friend of Andrea, which is always talking about Wikisource uh, and uh, how awesome it is, <laughs> I finally got to uh, think a lot about uh, what uh, I could do for uh, the improvement uh, of uh, Wikisource. And this presentation is about uh, what uh, I have uh, come out with which is WikiCAPTCHA, which is a, a recapture-like uh, solution for Wikisource, and uh, in my presentation I will uh, explain better what I mean. So some background. You have already heard that uh, Wikisource books are digitized by volunteers. We have uh, scans in digital format of the books, which are uploaded on Commons. These books have been OCR'd, 
for uh, uh, for who doesn't know what is OCR, is optical charity recognition, which is an automated way to transcribe the text, recognizing single characters in uh, in a scan, and then these scans, these bo books are upload uploaded in commerce, and in Wikisource volunteers transcribe them, you know, making the scan alongside the scan the text available for use. One particular thing to tell about uh, Dishboos is that Dishboos are uh, files which have many layers. One layer is the image, and then you can have a, another layer in the same file which contain the test, and you can add as much as many layers as you like. So in one single file, you have all this information, and this is why this is a really a common uh, format to have uh, ebook, digitized books. Last year, one of the Italian wiki sources of Alex named Alex Brollo not noticed that in the digital files we had from commons of a scanned book, which they run OCR, the unrecognized words and I recognize characters in particular were marked in the OCR by the software with a carrot symbol and a circumflex uh, accent. So he wrote a basic uh, script to extract these words, to recognize these words, <laughs> and make um, uh, and make little images of these unrecognized words. So we had the system. We, in principle, noticed that we could uh, find all the words in the book that uh, were not uh, correctly OCR, and uh, we thought that we could use them as a captcha challenge. What is recaptcha? What is a captcha in particular? Captcha are well uh, common, very very common uh, systems. And CAPTCHA is, uh, stands, is an acronym, stands for Completely Automated Public Turing <laughs> Test to Tell Computers and Human Apart. Yeah, it's really expressive, but <laughs> quite long to say. And uh, they were invented uh, by Louis Moran, uh, a professor at Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon University in uh, 2008. And uh, basically, they are a test to recognize if the entity submitting a form on a web page is a human or is a computer. So it's a Turing test. And it's completely automated because, because first captures uh, originated the random words and they uh, got images from those words and distorted them since uh, um, Optical character recognition not only is not perfect, but is uh, by far, uh, computer character recognition is by far very, uh, you know, much more ineffective than human <laughs> character recognition. The computer could create distorted images of words, and then after the distortion and all the, the application of filters, the computer is not more able to recognize the word it just generated. So, using the words of by Lu Louis Wanan, the computer could grade test which he himself itself was not able to pass, like many professors. <laughs> okay? Because, naturally, the computer know, knows the right answer, and the assumption is that if you transcribe correctly the word, if you recognize correctly, correctly the word, you are a human. I'll, if not, you are a computer. Yes. If you are a human, you can do all things human would like to do, like creating a new email account. The problem was that Kafka, which, is invent, which was invented also by Louis Vaughan, used meaningless words, which were automatically generated by the program. And uh, 
he was uh, really sad that uh, his uh, system was really su successful because he estimated that people were wasting millions of hours each year to solve Kafkaist. So he said that invented a system that was uh, wasting human time because uh, this system was uh, easily adopted on every website and so there was a lot of captures all around the web. And so he decided to uh, invent recaptcha, which used words from books, which are not correctly ocr and uh, also um, the system presents two words. One word is used as a proof because the system know, knows in advance the correct transcription of the word and the other word is not uh, known by the system. But if the human can transcribe correctly the first word, then probably he would also recognize correctly the second word and we have digitized another word which can we use we can use later well the system is uh, really solid and stable and it has been acquired by google and you can find it uh, more more information at recaptcha.net and it is used actually by google to transcribe all ancient books so some more details. As I said before, there are two words. One is a, re a recognized word, a word which the system knows the, the meaning, and another is an unrecognized word. And the user is asked to transcribe both words. If the uh, user transcribed the, the recognized word, then is assumed to be a human. But also transcri transcription on unrecognized words are collected, and with some rules, um, if many people transcribe in the same way a word, they are accepted as valid transcription, and so they become new recognized words. So the system, after an initial you know start, is uh, self-sustainable. Also, uh, you can refuse a word if you can't, you know, recognize it uh, because maybe it's too clumsy. And after many, um, after that many you user refuse the same word, they are marked as uh, unrecognizable. The problem is that we use a captcha system on a wiki sites, for example, for creating accounts, but they are the old systems. It's a uh, Random gener randomly generated words which are distorted in, in images produced and they are, you know, uh, challenges are submitted to the users. We don't use Recaptcha, which was, a, 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 you know, a long time proposal, is uh, one of the proposal uh, listed in the, like a, in a page on uh, English Wikipedia under the name Infinite Proposal because they have been proposed long Long, long, many, many times, and a long time ago. But the point is that we, the um, Wikimedia Foundation, doesn't want to use the recaptcha because it would mean to rely on an external service, and we don't uh, like this this um, drawback. So the point is implementing a new recaptcha system using only material that we have now. And Wikicaptcha would use uh, books from commons um, to uh, become the new Kafka system for wiki sites and uh, replace that uh, the, the one which is used currently, which has demonstrated some limitation uh, in a, a, you know a scientific publica publication. Uh, I can show you later if you want to ask more. And also, we could use this system to, uh, you know, have a better transcription of books in commons and on Wikisource. Now, the point is that Wikicapture, as to date, is a proof of concept. I'm not a computer sci scientist. I'm developing it and uh, as uh, not uh, for production use, but 
only to demonstrate that the system works <coughs> from the beginning. It, it has getting the book from commons to the end. It has uh, submitting challenges to the user. The process is quite simple. <laughs> we take a digibu, we extract unrecognized word, we get images of them, like the one you see under there, and uh, we store them in a DB plus file system, and then we can submit uh, and uh, uh, challenges to the user and collect the answers. Uh, the, I use the Python and uh, specifically Django for this last part. Django is the Python framework. And this, what uh, Wikicapture looks now, it's very uh, incomplete and uh, any feedback and any help uh, developing it is uh, welcome. What's missing? A lot of things actually, because I, as I said, the, the system is far from complete. And, but we need to um, find a way to produce the initial amount of recognized word for the challenges, for the system to work. We have to define rules to accept valid transcription. For example, the CAPTCHA use <coughs> the fact that if six different users transcribe the same word in the same way, then the uh, word is marked as recognized and correctly transcribed. And then we have to write back this result in the DigiBoo files. And this is not a simple problem because uh, DigiBoo files as a format have uh, many as say, many subtypes. And the one we are currently using um, doesn't allow to modify single pages. It's a whole block. And uh, so we, uh, in the current uh, state, we should uh, uh, re-upload all the book, uh, even if we change just one word in one, the, the OCR layer of just one word in uh, one page. Naturally, since the, the goal is to use this system on uh, wiki sites, which, are, which have a really, really uh, big pile of traffic, the system should be uh, you know, designed to be scalable and secure. One thing the, the, the system is currently missing is the you know, um, communication between uh, the user the client and the server, the secret communication of, yes, I'm sending you what uh, is my answer, and then you say to me if I'm a human or not, in a secret way. And that's, uh, that's all. And if you have a question, I'm here. And I think that uh, then we can also have more time for questions also for, other, for the other guys who have the previous uh, you know, presentation. Thank you. So you were talking about writing the stop packs for the shipping file, but should it be writing a pack to the shipping or just a liability mechanism for the administrator? Yeah. That's, you know, I think that transcribing the results back in Wikisource is more or less the easy part. Mm, because uh, yeah, but I think that uh, it's uh, if you can uh, if you have the the, the well, Dijibu really can't um, define you know the coordinates of the word in a book. You can. Um, Every, every word in the digital has uh, uh, its location and very specified. And uh, yeah, this is one thing. It, that's it's a, a tied, you know, question with what uh, and there was uh, was saying before to reduce the work unit to the single word. But I think that it's somewhat easy to put back the word because 
if you know the page, you have only to, you know, recognize surrounding words from the book and put it in, in the middle of, other, of the other words. I, I think it's the, the putting back the word in one Wikisource page is easier than uh, put it, put, putting it back in uh, the digital because of the format. And uh, um, well, if we use the other subtype of this rule, that would be also easy. But now we have to, you know, change the whole file, and so uh, reuploading uh, it is not feasible. And I don't know if I uh, answered your question. When we run out of books. <laughs> Sorry? So what happens when we run out of books to transcribe? That's a serious question, actually. I have some thought about it because, you know, uh, Google has like, I, I don't know how, how many books, but I, I think a gazillion of them. <laughs> and uh, uh, actually, the, 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 the worst case scenario is that we can continue to use uh, the current system, which is, you know, randomly generated order, and we should not run out of them, uh, I hope. <laughs> and uh, we can just add, uh, by side of the current system, a uh, wiki capture system, and so the recognized world, also, also this is a possible solution for the initial, you know, uh, stage, when you don't have any recognized world, and so you can generate an image with the current system plus um, a, a, a word from a book and then uh, if the if the user passes the test uh, you, you you start to accumulate uh, you know transcription and when you have enough transcribe the word you 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 start the full wiki capture system now um, will the wiki capture be only used if it if it's wor if it works, I don't see why you should you should uh, limit ourselves to wiki sites. The problem is, as uh, we were saying before, that we have some some books, but I mm, I don't think wiki capture will never ever be able to replace completely recapture because of the amount of of uh, requests and of unrecognized words requested to run such a system <coughs> that I think only, only Google now currently has. Has anybody estimated the amount of labor time to Because it's a useful technique for a utilitarian purpose, so much effort is going into solving this one issue of the OCR problem, but the other issues are not being dealt with. We have Google, which is massively uh, implementing the system, but yet is not producing human readable e text. So, what is, why is there so much effort into this one problem if this doesn't solve the larger labor, labor question? How do you do all of the other tasks that are human? Well, uh, in mind, I, I want to, to, to you know, say a premise. I think that, like in the next ten years, automated charity recognition will develop, will develop so much that maybe we uh, could no more use the system at all because the computer will, in, in one word, be become as good as uh, recognizing test as humans. This is what I think. And uh, um, the, ne the, the other, the, to, to answer you, I think the point is, mm, well, Google has its own, you know, uh, issues, problems, and uh, you know, goals. And uh, for us, uh, the point is of human labor is uh, that this, kind of system doesn't solve the problem of, you know, uh, 
free labor, but the amount of labor is so small per request that I think it's bearable. So I, I think this system is sustainable. If, if, because if the amount of work you, you are requesting is so, so little, I don't think the, the fact that it, it is free is a problem. Uh, in more general terms, uh, for transcribing books, uh, uh, I don't know if there is a solution that is not automatic. That is completely substituting humans with the machines. Uh, so, have you thought about if you, um, like, so what if we have a bloated archive? So let's forget that. Like, if we go to, like, the National Archives, which is working with Wikisource, like the NRA in America here is working with Wikisource, and we add them, and they're uploading new stuff, and if we yeah. ask them to make sure they upload theirs in the, the file type that works, and then we upload ha the handwritten document, and we have the humans check in the long hand. And that would be something that, you know, no one else is doing that is really, you know, really not as desirable. I don't know if I understood the, the question. Okay, the NAR, the archives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they have a lot of documents yeah. that are longhand, handwritten. Okay. If we use images from those deja vu files, and yeah. they uploaded them in the type of deja vu that works because they're not on there yet. Okay. I, I, I think... You, you are saying to, to, to use books from other sources other than commons? No, no, I mean, these aren't, these are, they're putting stuff on commons. Yeah, it's yeah. not like all written. on. We can yeah. ask them I think that, the right that, that, Yeah, I think that unwriting is even better because, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, in the archives, the blog that even, even humans, <laughs> even me, humans <laughs> aren't able to recognize <laughs> and write or, or oh, yeah. even on it. But the archives, I mean, if we offered them to transcribe their handwriting, they would be happy to change their format to the right data. I, I, think, I, think, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but um, you know, um, I think that uh, having, having uh, you know, the transcriptions of a, of, uh, of a book is uh, more of an issue. It's, uh, it's fundamental because if you have all these tests, they are pretty useful because you can search them. And this is the, this is the reason why Google is putting so much effort in, in having 100% perfect transcribed books because people can search and if uh, you have the text, you can search the text very easily and uh, you, can, you can find what you, you need. And for Google, this is, this is uh, really the, 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 the job. And, uh, uh, and writing is, is um, the, the point, the, the, what, what changes, the, the point is to uh, always use state-of-the-art OCR. Because as I said before, OCR is really advancing now, and, and, uh, and writing recognition, optical recognition system uh, are, uh, have been developed uh, since I think the 80s for, for checks, you know. Uh, in, in banks now you have machines that read automatically what you write on your checks and, and this is a uh, I'm writing optical recognition so so it's uh, feasible it's just the OCR system that is different but um, as I said before even for and writing I think that in 10 years uh, machines will be as good as you want to do such kind of stuff okay uh, if you have more I think that uh, I can I can leave some space for the other uh, you know the other presentation a uh, question for the other presentation we have all three can be here. Just as uh, a complement, actually in the French Wikisource, we're actually doing a project with uh, City Archive transcribing uh, manuscripts and handwriting. So there, there is just no OCR involved, but since we've got awesome volunteers to do this, it's not a problem. Yeah. I can send you the link on Twitter if you want.